we'll, <coughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make a start here now. And um, so thank you everybody for, for logging in. I see the numbers are creeping up slowly. And apologies for those of you who had a, 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 a trouble in logging in. I, I certainly did. It took me three attempts and hopefully it will obviously you've all made it through the world. Um, so, so first of all, I'd like to welcome Julio Fidel Sierra from uh, Cuba, from GeoCuba, um, talking about uh, training of staff and uh, a very vital topic and we're interested to hear this. Uh, Julio is a senior specialist for the uh, Ace Navigation Department at GeoCuba and graduated as a hydrographer and oceanographer um, in 97, has had a uh, various appointments there and is also very active in the engineering and the ARM technical committees um, for which we're very grateful and also helps out with the Spanish translations which um, which again is a, a great asset to IR. So uh, Julio I hand over to you um, if you want to to share your screen and uh, we'll just confirm that we're all seeing it and then I'll hand over to you. Yes uh, thank you Simon and hello everyone. I am today. I will be sharing this uh, presentation with my director, uh, Mr. Aluija Urgel. He's the CEO of our company. And uh, uh, yes, I will be sharing on my screen in just a moment. Okay, I think uh, we have a raised hand have a raise from hand. the audience. Peter, did you um, know that? Peter Petrov, are you have your hand up? No, maybe okay. not. Okay, may I begin? Uh, yes, yes, please. Over to you. Um, uh, uh, here we are. Over to you. Okay, thank you, Simon, for your kind uh, introduction. And well, th this uh, topic is, uh, I believe, this is very interesting for. Uh, could be very interesting for many uh, IALA members. It's uh, about the training of uh, workers and light keepers in what we call uh, a new training level. And uh, of course, you'll know that since ancient times, Eastern navigation uh, were uh, uh, established due to the need of the human beings to navigate and orient themselves uh, at sea. Uh, in many countries, uh, the lighthouses were the first official ace to navigation. Uh, th that is the case of Cuba. In 1768, the Morro de la Habana lighthouse was illuminated. It serves even today as a reference to the approach of the most important waterway in our country. Uh, Along with the emergence and development of lighthouses, it was also necessary to assign personnel to maintain and uh, to maintain these lights and the structure uh, with professional uh, with a professional level, who was increased as the advances and science in science and technology were applied to those uh, lighthouses. Uh, however, the development of uh, onboard navigational equipment, the automation of lighthouses, among other reasons, led in many cases to the loss of the specific knowledge on how to properly maintain the structures. Sometimes these structures have uh, a high historical and heritage value, and uh, sometimes the organization responsible for its care uh, don't have this uh, the knowledge or the proper trained personnel to maintain the structures and they apply uh, variants or options to provide maintenance such as contracting out in the Cuban case the the lighthouses were built between the 18th and 20th centuries and they are uh, located in the most exposed points of the country's geography as construction material, uh, it was used uh, ashen masonry and cast irons, and the later ones uh, were made out of uh, reinforced concrete. Uh, most of them were equipped with fresnel optics, 
uh, between first and fourth order. And well, the, the, the largest one were based on mercury basins, all of them supplied by uh, the extinct BBT. Uh, now we, I will provide some background on aid to navigation training in Cuba. The need to keep our lighthouses working effectively led to the existence of a lightkeeper's apprentice school. In 1857, uh, the work for the construction of such school initiated, uh, and at the same year it began to operate. The Fed's director was Federico Antonio Minut, who was a French machinist, and the content of the course were, was oriented to the techniques they would uh, operate and also to the ways of using the abundant free time. Uh, each course lasted by uh, around one year uh, with two examinations, two exams. Uh, even when the main objective of the main goal of these courses was to, to train uh, the Cuban light keepers, the competencies uh, were extended to uh, provide training for other uh, services such as uh, for, uh, or countries such as Puerto Rico and Santo Domingo. Now, uh, a little bit of information about uh, my company, Cuba Studios Marinos, or GOM, as a short name. Uh, this is a company, uh, part of the Cuba Entrepreneurial Group, specialized in marine research for engineering projects, nautical cartography, aids to navigation, and environment, environmental studies uh, of the marine domain. We have inherited uh, a vast experience of more than 40 years from the Cuban Institute of Hydrography. We are um, a, a body, the executive body of the Hydrographic and Geodetic Service of the Republic of Cuba. And we, as Simon said uh, at the beginning, we participate uh, in the ENG Committee of IALA. And uh, our organization has been a member of uh, IALA since 1968, and we incorporate in the provision of our service uh, IALA standards, recommendations, guidelines, and manuals, and all uh, relevant documents. During the, the pandemic, we haven't been at ease. We have been very busy because we have implemented a, a new Cuban boy, a modular polyethylene a boy designed and produced entirely by uh, our specialists in our country. We have uh, improved uh, the procedures to protect our ace navigation against the effect of hurricanes. We have acquired uh, for our, to improve the light output of our lighthouses, uh, several high intensity LED lights. We have also conducted internal and external training course by, by internals, I mean inside our company and external to other sister company that uh, needed those courses. And we have continued to implement AAS at on in the most uh, relevant ACE to navigations. Many of our services, uh, especially in developed countries, have these categories of personnel, I mean workers and light keepers. And there is uh, no specific training courses for them, so they lack a set of knowledge that make it difficult to to, for them to uh, satisfactorily fulfill the work. It has, of course, a very negative impact in the provision, on the provision of the service. May other, other services do not have L1 or L2 certified personnel, so they could, they could teach these uh, workers and light keepers. And our decision, HOM's decision, is to implement uh, at the national level in our republic, the specific professional training for our workers and eye keepers. In those topics used for the daily work, I mean, uh, uh, as well as creating uh, the capacity, the training capacities for other states with similar needs, with the objective of safeguarding the knowledge and the traditions of providing this important service at the executive level. Uh, this L3 course, we, we call this uh, L3 courses, and uh, it would be a completely new level of training. So 
the documentation to support this kind of uh, level uh, should be created, uh, especially considering the, the general elements contained in L1 and L2 courses. Uh, of course, other documents should be created completely uh, from, from the beginning. And our idea is not to compete with the already established ATOS. We would like to provide a level of training that it is not yet covered by current uh, courses. And we believe there is a great need of, of this knowledge. Uh, this would create uh, the new, new jobs or new position at vast basic levels uh, with the corresponding IALA or national certification. Uh, since the foundation of WWA, uh, this body have worked on the creation and delivery of L1 and and L2 courses and the foster and have fostering the pro the provision of such courses, uh, with an emphasis, of course, uh, on the creation of ATOs, and uh, WWA has sponsored those ILA members whose services uh, has been identified as priority in the list of states in need. In the Mesoamerican and Caribbean area, there are around 14 of these uh, states. Uh, among other uh, training and advisory activities, uh, the current scheme uh, of courses is like we, are, we will show in the next slide. This is a representation of the current uh, WWA courses. And uh, thanks to the support of the Academy and other national and international uh, uh, and industrial IALA members, we have been able to certify uh, several specialists in level 1.1, 1.3, level 2, module 8, and module 10. And we believe we have several favorable elements for the creation of training capacities as this L3 level, because we have uh, close relationships with uh, maritime training universities and schools, such as the Naval Academy, which is uh, uh, an institution certified by IMO. And we also uh, can count on the support of national maritime authorities and relevant users such as the Cuban pilots. Our company, as you can see in this uh, piece of, uh, of nautical chart, is located in the center of the most important waterway in Cuba, Havana mm -hmm. Bay. And we are very close of, uh, to the uh, first ace to navigation ever installed in Cuba, Moro de la Habana Lighthouse. We also have specialists with more than 20 years of work experience in the ASO navigation field, uh, also certified by WWA, and we possess ASO navigation of different technologies and historical periods, so they could be used as basic study material, and we have the, the possibility to create new didactic materials if uh, it is necessary. Our premises are suitable for the educational process, and we already have uh, established a relationship with uh, uh, ATOs uh, that could uh, and are willing to collaborate with our effort to train our, our personnel and, and personnel, in, and personnel A2 navigation personnel in the area. We have also experience in the preparation and delivery of internal uh, and external training courses. Uh, we have uh, specialists already certified with professional category. This is important because this is the way uh, it's important to know how to, to uh, pass the knowledge to other to other people. And we have specialists prepared to deliver courses in English and French if required. And since 2007, we have certified our quality management system, and we moved in 2018 to the integrated management system, which is, of course, a, a, a 
a very good thing when, to facilitate the management of the training courses. It, it, this uh, system is based on ISO standards. We have local and regional service vessels that can, could be used uh, for practical lessons. And this is uh, a proposal of the structure of the, at, at first, of course, of the basic training for agent workers. The scope is to provide a basic theoretical practical introduction to agents for workers responsible to perform tasks related to the installation, maintenance, and repair of agent navigation. The mode of delivery must be residential. The duration about 10 to 10 days with a theoretical and practical final evaluation. And the certification would be L3.1 Aton Worker. And this is uh, a first approach to the typical content. A Module 1, basic knowledge. A Module 2, structures and component of Aton navigation. And a Module 3, on maintenance and repair of Aston navigation. Of course, uh, there is also the basic training for lightkeepers, uh, aimed to provide a theoretical and practical introduction to the lighthouses, mainly for those that require permanent attention, uh, such the lighthouses with surveillance. For the lightkeepers responsible of carrying the tasks related to the operation, maintenance, and repair, the mode of delivery, duration, and theoretical practical celebration will be approximately the same with a certification level L3.2 lightkeeper. And uh, of course, the structure should, uh, could be uh, more or less the same. But uh, of course, the content of every module could be slightly different because they have different needs, of course. And uh, how WWA courses with L3 would look like with the addition of the L3 uh, level. And to summarize, we have the uh, Cuba Estudios Marinos GMs has the will and the capacity to train workers and lightkeepers. We are taking advantage of course of the maritime uh, personal training, uh, personal training capacities or capabilities created by the Cuban state, and we have the support not only of uh, national authorities or users, but also of the of uh, ATOs as well. And we are in position to share these capacities uh, e to the services in our geographic area and others on their request, especially, I believe, with uh, those already identified by WWA as states in need to assist the academy in its effort of providing the professional level of IAL members to enhance safe navigation while we provide this capacity to create new positions for appropriate trained and certified personnel in member countries of with interest to become ILM members. So I would like to thank you all for your kind attention and for your patience, and we are open to any suggestions or comments that you might have. Thank you. Maria, thank you very much. It's really um, interesting to see the work you've done there and how you've identified a need and come up with a proposal to um, attend to that need. That's uh, very interesting and uh, I think uh, the Academy would be very interested in, in, in hearing this. Um, any, any questions from anybody? Um, I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. Any questions, hands raised or whatever? No? Um, oh, yes, same on. Um um, yes. yes, sorry, my apologies. I didn't raise the hand. Uh, oh, I, yes, uh, I, I was just wondering if uh, there will be kind of uh, an update on the, the mass actually the Okuba has in regard uh, well to have to perform source surveys there in the area. So is, is there something new coming from this uh, specific project you have 
there, Julio? Uh, well, uh, Jaime, we uh, have been visited by several um, um, representatives of the of our geographic area services, and there is uh, a common ground on the need to to provide training on these topics. Uh, they would they have asked us to to prepare these courses, uh, and this has been, uh, have I said, uh, I have said uh, something that always is uh, a common question to us. Uh, some uh, services have addressed uh, uh, to our company the, the need to train uh, and and to help them with this uh, topic of training for uh, workers or light keepers. Yes, I don't know if this answered the, fully the question. Well, uh, it, it was just uh, an update on uh, the autonomous ships you use for surveys there. Uh, oh. If there is yeah, some I, I kind of... No. Okay. Is a, a, It's gone quiet, Julio. Yes, yes. Uh, well, Jaime, mean, we yes, we use uh, an autonomous ship, uh, MIS, to uh, shallow waters hydrographic surveys. Uh, it is quite recent, and uh, we are gathering uh, some experience if we have been. Uh, getting from our personnel in the field. Uh, I remember the the webinar that was uh, sponsored by Ayala and it was, uh, but we couldn't participate because we, we, we didn't have at the time enough information to, to share with Ayala members. Yes, but yes, we use uh, one uh, surface uh, vessel to in our hydrographic uh, surveys. Okay, th thank you, Julio. Thank you, Julio. Uh, very interesting, and I'm sure um, uh, Kevin will uh, be looking at this further from the academy. Um, so, thank you. Um, Right, our next presentation is from Kevin Gregory. Kevin is the Education and Development Manager from the Worldwide Academy. And I think for most of you will need little introduction. Um, I've worked closely with Kevin over some years now and grateful to his support as, as we deliver some uh, level one and, uh, and two courses. So Kevin, I think you're going to give us a talk, uh, an update on the Academy activities. And the floor is yours, Kevin. Thanks very much, Simon. Thank you. And um, good afternoon to everybody um, from Saint Germain en Laye. And we hope to um, see you all here, uh, hopefully in the spring, for uh, some face to face meetings, all being well. So hopefully I've shared my, my screen now. Um, I'll just. Yeah, we, we, we uh, can see that, Kevin. That's good. Set up here. Perfect. And, and thanks very much to. Um, to, to Julio and, and the team in Cuba there for um, for a very good um, presentation. Uh, so it's very thorough on, on the training aspect and also uh, really good to hear of um, what's going on um, in Cuba um, in terms of aids to navigation, operations and development. And um, as Jamie uh, brought up from our side, um, some um, use of new technologies there um, as well. Um, I'll try and address some of the points um, Julio raised during my presentation um, to, to provide some, some feedback there, um, as I think there are several options um, to consider, hopefully to, uh, to try to bring um, this concept and these ideas um, to life. Um, for the benefit of the 
aids to navigation community and I think some work um, that we've got underway in the academy uh, at the moment could help in um, in bringing these ideas to, to good use. And I have to say it's really good to hear of the, these new ideas and I think um, I can see there's some representatives from um, China MSA here as well and they made excellent input paper as well um, to the engineering committee um, with respect to um, the, the training of, of boy tender personnel and I think there's there's some good topics there which um, I think we can we can look to address and uh, and bring forwards as well. So this is a general briefing on the um, work of the, the Worldwide Academy. Um, and we have a, a great team led by Omar, who's uh, actually just sitting over to, to my left and, and Geraldine is actually sitting over to my right. So we have the full house here um, in Saint-Germain um, on Ley, and we're here together um, this week. Uh, principally because we have a, a Worldwide Academy board meeting tomorrow um, because as you'll recall the, the Academy is entirely um, funded by um, some generous sponsors some of whom are here on the call today and we thank you for your support and um, from those sponsors we draw a, a governing board to provide oversight of what we do and a big element that we're looking at this week is to plan our activity for 2022, uh, particularly capitalising now in that uh, access to the world is opening up again and we can continue our mission to enlighten, educate and engage all those um, with an interest in marine aids to navigation provision. And we look across the board in the academy. Um, see, we're very active in what I'd loosely call the traditional aids to navigation side, but also um, increasing our involvement um, rapidly in the vessel traffic services sector and also really consolidating what we do in terms of risk management. So our strategy now is based around these three principles, um, enlightening um, through working with um, decision makers and their teams to ensure that everybody has a good knowledge of the international obligations related to, to aids to navigation and this is very very interesting and there are still some some gaps here and um, you'll see I, I've got a slide a little bit later on which highlights some of the, the shortcomings around the world um, in that respect but it's really to to, to enlighten um, states as to the importance of aids to navigation not only for safety of navigation but the consequential impact that has on their economy and the development of the country concerned through facilitating safe and efficient trade um, to their ports and for the wider benefit of the community we're very active in terms of education in terms of um, all of the training courses that that we offer and we are uh, always diversifying our, our training offering and here it's really important to hear um, the life of the presentation we just had from Julio and the team and, and the input from China earlier in the week about things we may be missing and things we may need to, to focus on some more and we're very active at engagement um, in terms of capacity building with coastal states in need of our help and helping them with hints, tips and suggestions and a framework for them to overcome challenges. And you'll see um, later on that um, geraldine has been on the road already this year um, and has been overseas on a couple of missions with um, excellent um, results. And we have much more to come this year and into next year. So you'll be aware of the two goals for Ayala. I won't dwell too much um, here. Um, but obviously, in, in the committees, you do very important work in terms of goal one, developing the, the standards. And a big part of our job in the academy is to um, bring these to life around the world and to help um, the network of marine aids to navigation grow 
through capacity building and the sharing of expertise. And we're reliant on, again, the IALA members to help us doing that, uh, principally those who sponsor the activities of the academy uh, provide um, great assistance, but also uh, we're reliant on the work we do with um, our members, for instance, um, through, through Simon's accredited training organisation in the UK, through the excellent work which goes on in other um, accredited training organisations. an excellent framework for um, development and the sharing of expertise. But as I, I mentioned, um, a big part of our work is to uh, bring the outputs of the, the technical committees to life around the world and to really promote the good work that you do in the development of these guidance documents and to facilitate their implementation around the world. And now um, when, when a technical uh, mission um, is, is conducted, uh, we very much look and map um, the state against the IR standards, the recommendations and the guidelines. So it's uh, a very important framework that um, we, we use when we're on technical missions to see how states work and operate and point them in the direction of, of in particular the guidelines and, and it's testament to the work of the committees that generally um, if states have problems and generally when we get queries into the academy we can always point to a guideline where the answer um, is and rarely but sometimes um, there's not an answer in the guidelines and that's when we um, sometimes come to the the committee with ideas for new work items and suggestions as to how the framework can be improved uh, from the evidence that we pick up on the ground. So we try to be very much integrated with what you do in the technical committees and on our education and training side now we're actively um, bringing the, the, the the framework, the recommendations and the guidelines more into training activities really to force is quite a strong word, but I use it to, to force the students to interact with the publications to get them to use them and understand the help that they can provide. So as I mentioned, we have been um, on, the, on the road again. Well, uh, um, Geraldine has been very active um, in terms of two missions into the Lebanon and to El Salvador and we've been very much um, welcomed um, in the countries to do the needs assessment missions and and it's clear that there, there is a strong demand for for assistance from the academy and we have a very active program for the remainder of the year and into 2022 where we will continue um, our mission of um, enlightenment and engagement um, as we go out to to meet um, our members and coastal states in need and it, it's very important to to work with the countries and for instance the Lebanon uh, are, are a great team uh, I see some challenges in the country at the moment but it's fantastic to see there that the, the commitment that they have to the safety of navigation and what they see as the role of Lebanon in improving their aids to navigation and vessel traffic service capability to really ensure the economic and uh, and trade recovery of the country from the, the difficulties they've, they've experienced and they have a very good future vision of um, of being a, a good centre of excellence in, in the region for, for training and aids to navigation provision. We've continued our work with uh, virtual capacity building and this is something which will continue in the future. I showed these slides I think last time with, with Somalia um, but through virtual capacity building through online work uh, we've been able really to execute all three elements of, of the strategy in, in Somalia. Um, enlightenment through working with the, the ministers and the IMO representatives, um, education through um, 
training three marine aids to navigation managers in the country and active engagement through a process of risk assessment and virtual capacity building operations which essentially have resulted in an action plan um, to really revitalize uh, the, the port of Mogadishu um, to be in the best possible place for the increasing levels of trade uh, and development that they are seeing in the country. So a good success story in Somalia and we hope to visit the country all being well um, next year. Hopefully you've watched the, the webinar series that, that we've had, they're all online if you've missed any of them. Um, they're a fantastic um, resource um, for, for training, education, capacity building um, as far as um, the Worldwide Academy webinars are concerned. Uh, we've tried to make them quite educational in nature, uh, drawing from the model courses, so topics that we have and the lectures that we use in the training, but also uh, matching them up with um, a presentation for, from a member to explain how then this uh, guideline the education has been put into practice um, in the country's concerned. We had some uh, good feedback on the first series on aids to navigation management. We had a very popular series on, on vessel traffic services and um, we're planning season three, um, hopefully in 2022. So if there's any interesting themes that you have, um, please don't hesitate to let us know. and We'll see what we can do. But this is a great library um, and please um, use them. Last year um, in, in this presentation, I gave some feedback on, on IMSAS and I was just browsing through the IMO website um, the other day and they issued a new circular. And this was one of the, the findings in their audit summary about aids to navigation. Um, and here we can see some of the challenges that, that we come up against um, in terms of when we're working with states. So here we, we, we can see um, issues with regards to availability and maintenance of aids to navigation with a lack of financial resources, no clear responsibility, a lack of a, a risk assessment, um, lack of um, management, a database of aids to navigation and lack of, of maintenance. Uh, we don't know what country this is because the, the, the IMSAS reports are anonymized, uh, but as I mentioned, it's, it's it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's it's a good thing because we can see in the the documents that the committees produce, there are answers to all of these questions and information about how all of this can can be addressed. Uh, but a bad thing that you know some some states still aren't doing this, and that's where we work to uh, across all of those levels through the high level engagement to raise awareness of the financial resources and responsibility and implications through education and engagement to show how this can be um, achieved and through then the uh, the work on the ground to to really work with states so this one was hot off the press and these are the issues which we which we see around the world and uh, this was one particular state um, with these um, issues raised in their IMSAS audit. On to training, um, there's been a lot of work um, um, going on in terms of training. We have a whole new series of risk management um, courses. These were very popular courses when delivered in the face-to-face -face environment and with um, really capitalised really on, on COVID. It's been a good benefit of the, the the bad situation we've had in that we've really refocused this training and it's now online and allows the students to go into much, much more depth on all of the tools. So it's a bit of an a la carte menu. So you can choose which risk management tools you're interested in. You have to do a mandatory uh, module on concepts of risk management and then you can do a deep dive into, into the other tools into a lot more detail. We'll carry on face to face training um, in, in the tools, but there will be uh, certainly a hybrid approach. So when we are together um, face to face, we can really look in detail at the tools to to add more value. Um, also keen in due course to, to revitalize uh, the navigation and GNSS training course. We have some impact input on that already. Um, so that's probably a task for for um, early 2022 to um, to have a small working group to, to look into how we can bring this training back to life again. It's a rapidly evolving area 
and there's a lot of interest but we have to again recognize here that some states are at a very advanced level and some states at a, the foundation level in terms of e-navigation and we need to be able to meet all of their needs. The accredited training organizations um, continue to expand. They have been a little bit on furlough certainly for some of the aids to navigation um, manager course um, ATOs that the 15 of them apart from um, Trinity House and, and France uh, there's not been much external activity um, during the, the, the pandemic period but um, within the academy our own distance learning um, programs have been very active and well subscribed and we're really hopeful for face-to-face um, -face training to resume in earnest um, in 2022 and we're seeing a sustained growth in, in the VTS accredited training organizations as well with some 35 delivering VTS courses around the world. So we've um, made good advances in the, the uh, level one manager course, there's new course materials which fine tuning and, and finalizing those and we also for that particular course now have completed the, the full suite of um, textbooks and, and here they are. So this is the kind of textbook volume that you have now for, for a level one course and um, these are available to everyone who works on the course. They're fantastic um, resources to have and they're available to all of our students in um, electronic and hard copy um, form and they help to bring the course alive. So we're really hopeful that some um, face to face training will get underway next year, uh, both in English, um, hopefully in the Spanish language in, in, in Colombia and, and in the French language as well. And we uh, are anticipating um, level two training starting in Bahrain um, later this year, uh, delivering in both English and Arabic. So I talked about this uh, briefly. We've been doing a lot of work on the on on, on the training to, to develop it. But I think really just to, to look at maybe what Julio was saying there earlier about that excellent initiative. Um, we're looking more at competencies now within the the academy. So, for instance, there you had the the aid to navigation you know, lighthouse keeper, um, an aid to navigation technician. They all have training needs. And I think it, it's, it was good to see in a way, reassuring in one way, that a lot of the content which Julio mentioned is already somewhere in our, in our model course environment. Uh, many of the topics are already taken care of. So we're looking at the competencies now to identify training needs whereby um, the model course framework can be used a bit more flexibly, where elements of model courses of interest can be can be pulled together to make a meaningful package for for, for individuals, as opposed to creating many model courses which might not necessarily there be a need for, or they might not be sustainable for the long term. But having a set of training needs, uh, competencies, and then signpost uh, where there is training material to support them. That's one way in which we are actively looking. So there we are. I think um, I, I'm wrapping up there. We're um, here to um, to promote the standards and the work you do in the committees and to help um, coastal states have um, compliant, efficient and effective um, systems of marine aids to navigation in their in their countries. So um, happy to take any questions or also um, we're all together here. So um, I have Omar and Geraldine as well, who, 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 who may also be able to, to, to jump in. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as ever, very interesting to hear the um, Academy's of, um, progress and your thoughts into the future as well, to see the continual development of the, of the course delivery and the course content. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to see it in a, a live organisation there. Um, and any questions for, for Kevin, and, um, raise your hand or put it in the chat, nothing in the chat. Any hands raised for Kevin here? Um, yes, we have from Tid Paldry from Estonia. Hello, Over Kevin. Hello, uh, Tid, nice, nice to see you or hear you. Can't <laughs> see you, but uh, can hear you, that's good. Yes. Uh, you told about those textbooks. Are those meant only for uh, 
students who are learning or can get old students also those textbooks <laughs> for old students yes i was going to i was going to congratulate you you're one of our alumni um so um i i think yes they're, they're designed for um uh, for, for students on the course so we wouldn't normally release them to people who aren't students although I can see that um, for, for alumni uh, those who have completed the course and are certified they could be used as a nice um, refresher tool and as a means for you to have continual professional development so as an alumni um, I think we could be persuaded to, uh, to to let you have an electronic copy of those. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, and thank you, thank you, T. That's a good, uh, good, good question there, um, because I know they're they're really excellent uh, reference books, and along with the nav guide, you know, you, you, you've got all the knowledge you need to to run a competent uh, setup. Um, any further questions for Kevin here? That's good. Sorry, if I may, you raised a good point there about people often say, well, "What's the difference between these and the nav guide?" Um, well, these actually follow the course um, logically through from start to finish, and and they're meant to be used with the nav guide, but they they provide much more kind of explanatory and background information than the nav guide does. So these are really good um, explainers um, to to, to complement the presentations, and you can see just with them they're they're much more bulky than the, the nav guide in total. So there's a lot of good good information here. And we're, we're thankful for um, Colin Day from Ireland for, for putting those um, together for us. Okay. Yes, uh, OK, thanks, Kevin. Any further questions? If not, we're a little bit over time, so I think we'll wrap up. And I, I thank you all for joining. I think it's been an informative um, for, for me. It's been a lunchtime session, but for others around the world, it's been uh, late in the morning or or, um, or early, um, uh, um, sorry, early morning or late night. So thanks for joining us and um, I bid you a good day and I look forward to seeing you again. And I know this is a joint affair with uh, ARM and um, ENAB, I believe. So um, thank you for joining. Any final points, Jaime? No, no, no final points. Thank you, Simon. Okay. okay, thanks everybody and um, thanks. have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.